generations of Filipinos has been educated to hate Spanish rule over the Philippines as being oppressive and abusive, using a violent iron fist to tame the innocent Indios. The church is depicted as Padre Damaso, an abusive friar, threatening the natives with the word of God and whose vow of chastity is questionable. More than 50 years since the United States granted the Philippines its sovereignty, the situation is still the same. There's a lawmaker who proposed to create a new commission to rename our nation to break such Spanish colonial bonds. Have we become a nation of deceived Filipinos? The Philippines at the time of Lapu-Lapu did not even existed yet. Before 1521, we could have been anything and everything not Filipino, says the Filipino national artist Nick Joaquin. These islands were in fact home to many kingdoms, each having a population of 30 to 100 families. Too much kingdoms caused friction in these small islands that their relation was unmitigated hostility, which took the form of headhunting. Early missionaries took note of the prevailing slavery system of that time. We quote, If a man in some time of need shelters a relative or a brother in his house, supports him, and provides him with food for a few days, he will consider that relative as his slave from that time on. At times, they sell their own children. All of this happened in a group of islands which did not form any sovereign country called Philippines. They were having their own kingdoms, their own language, and even their own alphabet. This could have been the present Philippine situation as our oceanic neighbors, but the year 1521 placed its mark on these small islands. Ferdinand Magellan and his team of sailors and missionaries while trying to prove that the world is round, discovered a group of islands at the Asiatic part of the Pacific, which we now know as the islands of Samar, Leyte, and Cebu. Among these savage three, Magellan had the cross erected, the first mass celebrated, and the first catechism taught in preparation for the first baptism of the islands. The natives were not forced to convert but rather, they chose to be Christians out of their free will. These first missionary acts were crowned with the gift of Santo Nino. The discovery of these small islands rang a bell in Spain. Various expeditions were sent but failed. Among these failed expeditions was that of Ruy Lopez de Villalobos, who gave the name Felipenas to Samar and Leyte. These failures prompted the noblemen of Spain to tell their king to abandon these expeditions and turn to something more productive. And it was true. Our islands were unproductive that the Chinese of old considered us as land of savages and snakes. So unproductive we were that we failed to motivate them to share their civilization with us. The Chinese were using papers for a long time, while before Spain, we were still writing on tree barks. Javanese neighbors would have their huge stone temples, while ancient Filipinos would not even have a stone structure for worship. Spain could have just abandoned us, but Felipe II said, I will give up all the treasures of the Indies, even for the conversion of one soul in those islands. And in 1565, he sent Miguel Lopez de Legazpi and Fray Andres Oldaneta for a new expedition to preach to the natives the love of Jesus Christ by which they will be saved. On June 24, 1571, 
The Gaspi founded Manila as the capital of a new nation named Filipinas. In span of 50 years, we had become a civilized nation, even complete with our own university, the first in whole Asia. Only the Catholic Spain adopted us in our poverty and turned us into her illustrious daughter. That when the Americans came to the Philippines some hundred years later, they found European cities in a tropical country. By 1599, the local chieftains were gathered in order to voluntarily elect the King of Spain as their sovereign. The natives chose the King of Spain, and out of many kingdoms, there comes a new nation even extending up to Palau, Marianas, and Carolinas. And what does this mean to the first Filipinos? It meant civilization. Spain introduced us the then new technology to root us out of unproductivity. The wheel, the plow, which we lovingly called Araro, a Spanish word, and importing to our islands new crops and livestock. Rice, which was scarce in pre-Hispanic era, has become the staple food among the Filipinos even up to the present moment, thanks to these new technologies. Summertime in the Philippines can be associated with guava, guayabas, bayabas, which was brought to us by Spain. Our caldereta is incomplete without the beef of the cows, which was brought to us by Spain, as well as the art of guisado. How would Jose Rizal write his immortal Mi Ultimo Adios without the paper and language brought to us by Spain? How about Juan Luna in his paintings hanging on some walls in Spain? Was it also part of Spanish cruelty against the natives? Could the Filipinos' passion for communication have begun when the Spaniards converted our Baybayin into Latin alphabet? Indeed, our pre-Hispanic history shows that each place has their own systems of writings, which may be unknown even to the next province and only our Spanish education united the whole nation. This brings us to the question, did Spain exploit the Philippines? Did the 333 year Spanish rule meant only to benefit Spain? When we talk about the first 300 years, exploitation does not apply to their rule. In fact, Spain had deficits in governing our country that Mexico had to pay for us, and this gave some government officials the strength to tell the King of Spain to abandon Philippines. Things changed in the government for the last 30 years of Spanish rule. When the Masons took hold of the monarchy, only did the Filipinos felt as being used as a colony. The result was instantaneous, a revolution, which may be already ripe, for the Philippines has been civilized as a son groomed to live an independent, mature life. Above all, Spain taught us to worship the one true God. All those colorful traditions and customs that we still take pride of are the fruits of a great missionary adventure part of building up the church in the Philippines. Coming in pair with evangelization, the missionaries brought a Christian civilization to our shores. What is surprising is that every new technology and products we mentioned earlier, even our modern towns and cities, were facilitated by the missionary priests and religious, so far from the ancient stereotype of Padre Damaso. 500 years have passed since the first Mass celebrated on an Easter Sunday morning. 
When Magallanes planted the cross of Christ, he may have not known that he had planted the seed of Christianity in the Philippines, who over the centuries became the lifeblood and the culture of the Filipino people. We were no longer that dreaded barren Egyptian deserts. We had become the promised land. Oh, see, qual tu i morir.